Hello everyone, Cientier here with the Monk part of my Guild Wars 1 skill review project, and today we are talking about healing prayers. So, there's a bunch of them, let's jump right in. Healing prayers are all about restoring health, uh, and we're going to start with Cure Hex. So, Cure Hex is 5 energy, 1 second cast time, 12 second recharge spell. Remove 1 hex from target ally. If a hex was removed, that ally is healed for 102 health. This is kind of weird in that it feels a little bit more in the mold of a protection prayer spell than a healing prayer spell, but it's a very solid skill. Um, a lot of hexes will cause damage in some way, shape, or form. It's useful to have hex removal. Uh, so this is certainly an option that I like to bring. I'm going to give it a 4, just because I do commonly slot it into... Uh, here, hex here, okay. Uh, I do commonly slot it into builds, um, and so this is a common way that I remove hexes. It's not the only way. Um, I will potentially use uh, remove hex on uh, in other scenarios or uh, say hex breaker area I think it is um, but certainly cure hex is a, a commonly picked choice for me Duena's kiss five energy one second cast time three second recharge nice and low spell heal target other ally for 51 health and an additional 30 health for each enchantment or hex on that ally um, the word or there is kind of strange. It could be and. Basically, the more enchantments and hexes they have, the more this heals for. Um, it does not target yourself, which is a big weakness, and certainly something to be very uh, wary of. It does have some nice kissing lips icon there. Um, but this can heal for a lot. It's not uncommon to uh, for an ally that has a bunch of damage to have one or two enchantments on them when they're getting targeted. This can heal for easily uh, and reliably like 81 to like 111 health on sort of these stats. Uh, now, granted, I often have my uh, heroes at 11 because I'm doing an 11-10-10 attribute split. But the other thing is this also works really well if you're in an area where you're getting laden down with hexes. And, I mean, you can only remove them so quickly. Uh, so that this really helps uh, overcome them. For me, this is a 5. Um, the effect is actually quite strong. I like this sort of skill because it's actually quite a powerful heal. But it doesn't necessarily look it on the surface. And it's only until you really play with it and realize the sort of numbers you can hit with this. Uh, like, in some extreme scenarios, you can see this even encroaching 200 HP. Like, they have to be really laden down with enchantments and hexes for that to happen. But it can happen. Um, basically, they need five. Actually, that, that's all that they need. They need five enchantments and hexes uh, on them and or um, to, to make that uh, 150 additional health. So it is not unreasonable to see this heal for quite substantial sums. Uh, so it is actually a very powerful heal, but I really like the design of it because it's one of those skills that doesn't seem all that exciting on the surface. It seems like, eh, this may be okay. But then when you start playing with it and you start start understanding how it works uh, and sort of the results of that, you begin to realize, oh, this is actually really strong. Huh. So this is a really cool design because it allows for some of that discovery, some of that process of um, learning what's actually really good. Uh, and so I really appreciate that a skill like this exists, um, both because it's strong to use, it's kind of fun to use, it's got some cool quirks about it, uh, it has some variability to it, um, but also because it it's it opens up room for kind of like understanding of like, oh, this, okay, I can kind of think about things in different ways and, and whatnot. So really good design here from that standpoint. Um, and uh, a really powerful skill to boot and one that I'm... I basically, if I'm running healing prayers, Duena's Kiss is on my bar. Uh, that's just usually how it goes. Duena's Sorrow. Five energy, one second cast time, five second recharge, enchantment spell. For 30 seconds, target ally and all nearby allies are enchanted with Duena's Sorrow. If an ally dies while under the effects of Duena's Sorrow, your party is healed for 41 HP. So this is a two. Um... Now, in general, I'd say you don't want to bring skills that rely on bad things happening. Granted. However, this says allies. It heals in a pretty big area. This works super well with minions. So, um, if you are running some sort of minion master um, build, 
in, in your party. Duena's Sorrow might be a reasonable choice. Uh, it can go on the minions and provide some additional party healing in that way. It's super cheap uh, at 5 energy and 5 recharge. And healing your party is really strong. So while it does require things to die, minions dying is a great way to take advantage of this. So that's the main place that I'd use this. I wouldn't just bring this otherwise. Um, but if I am going with a minion master, Duena's Sorrow is actually pretty sweet. Uh, so, Ethereal Light, 5 energy, 1 second cast time, 5 second recharge, spell, target allies yield, healed for 85 health, this spell is easily interrupted, that easily interrupted clause does matter, uh, it's quite possible for enemies to attack you, and the, while you can heal yourself with this, it is very ineffective at healing you if you're under enough pressure, because somebody's going to hit you while you're trying to get it off, and it's not going to happen. It also has a little bit of a longer recharge at 5 seconds. That is something that really does matter in healing prayers. You generally want to be getting them off kind of as often as you can. 5 seconds is not terrible, but it is a little long. Um, not badly so. For me, this is a 4. Uh, if I'm kind of focusing more on healing prayers, it's certainly an option. It is going to be behind something like Duena's Kiss. Um, but that said, um, I certainly will pick it over some of the other options that we will see later that are just clunkier. Because uh, it's a solid amount of health that it heals for. Um, so it, it, it's, it's fine in that regard. Uh, Gift of Health. Five energy, three quarter second cast time, five second recharge, spell... All of your other healing prayer skills are disabled for 6 seconds. Target other ally is healed for 123 health. So this is a very strong and cheap heal, but it comes with a downside of disabling all of your other healing prayers. So this is a, a 2, uh, but it's a really cool 2. Because this design is one that immediately, like, when you first read it, you're like, but why would I want to use this? And the reason why is it's still a really solid heal, even with low attribute investment. Uh, like, it's perfectly reasonable to use at, like, 9 attribute points, right? That's it's still, um, in fact, if I go down to 9 right now, you'll see that Gift of Health is still 96 health. That's actually pretty solid. Um, certainly, it's more solid than Ethereal Light is at uh, 12. So, this actually heals for quite a lot. You would bring this if you're doing some sort of build that's more focused on uh, Divine Favor and, say, Smiting Prayers or um, protection prayers, where you're dipping into, uh, you're probably doing a, a 12, 10, 8 sort of attribute split, and you're dipping into healing for just this skill, um, which is perfectly reasonable to do when it's this effective, and those other lines are generally not going to have heals, so like this might work well on a, uh, a smiter's boon uh, type of build uh, as just an additional way of getting healing going. Um, that's just more of a, a directed heal. Um, so I like this one in those sorts of scenarios, but if I'm this typical sort of build that I run, I do not want this because I am using, uh, healing prayer stuff. Uh, and it, it obviously does not work well with that, but it's a really cool design in that it, it makes you think of how can I apply this? Cause it is really efficient healing. Uh, but how do you fit it on? becomes a bit of a, a little bit of a puzzle. So it's a nice sort of Johnny-ish skill in that regard. Uh, Johnny Jenny being referring to psychographic of like build around me's and like how do I make these things work and stuff like that. Uh, so I appreciate the design from that standpoint because it does fit in really interestingly uh, and it, it kind of makes you think. So really well designed skill, uh, just not one that I typically use uh, because of the scenarios and stuff. So I'm rating these on how often I use them mostly, not on how uh, interesting the design is. So that's what it kind of comes down to. Glimmer of Light, five energy, one quarter second activation time, one second recharge, very low. It is an elite spell, heal target ally for 94 health. So this is an interesting one. It's basically like the super generic heal, uh, where super is indicating its quality, not that it is super generic, but rather that it is a super heal, but it's a generic, like most generic one. So it's like, super ramped up. I mean, it's basically the elite version of Orson of Healing is really what it comes down to. Um, so, the thing is, right, Healing Burst is kind of my go-to Healing Prayers Elite. 
we'll get to why when we get down to that one. Um, this is kind of competing for that slot. The one second recharge and quarter second activation time are both really nice. This is basically always ready for you to use. Obviously, zero recharge would be a little bit better, but not by much. And having that quick activation time is actually really handy because it lets you buffer a bar. The thing is, all it does is it heals one person. And um, that's just not quite enough for me. Um, it's a three, right? This is one of those elites where it's like, this is fine, but monk elites are super competitive, so it has a really hard time finding a spot on a bar. It's not going to push out, like, Healer's Boon or um, Unyielding Aura or something like that. So it's just like, yeah, this is solid. Uh, its strength is entirely on its cast time and recharge. I wish it was three energy. They didn't do that. This would be more of a three energy skill. If it's three energy, I'd be like, yeah, this is super sweet. At five, it's actually just a little bit much for the effect when it takes up your elite slot, if that makes any sort of sense. Um, keep in mind, we're, we're comparing it to like Duena's Kiss, which is also five energy, but can easily heal for more um, and often does heal for more. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the issue here. Um, so... Heal area, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the same thing as Cry's Healing Circle. Yeah. Um, 10 energy, 1 second cast time, 5 second recharge spell. Heal yourself and all adjacent creatures for 150 points. Um, which is what heal area does. The same same thing. <sighs> okay, I understand the space that they're playing in with this. Here's the problem. When it says all adjacent creatures, it, what it means is any living thing next to you, um, including enemies, which is not really what you want to do. Like, so it's not guaranteed to heal enemies, obviously. Um, it's, it's not like if they're at range from you, it's not going to heal them. And it can heal some of your allies, but, and, and like 150 is a good amount of heal, but it is so expensive at 10 energy and like requiring me to be basically point blank with the person I'm trying to heal if I'm trying to heal somebody else. Like basically you have to be healing, um, oh, I want to say three or four people to really make this energy cost worth it. Like that might sound like a lot, but the thing is, um, 10 energy skills are very expensive on the monk. And so they really have to be doing a lot. And heal other is just so clunky and awkward to use. Uh, to me, these guys, uh, heal other and uh, Christ healing circle are ones. I don't want them. I don't have a reason to use them. They're dubiously useful with minions to try to heal them, but even that's questionable. Uh, I think... Yeah, man. If... So... If the area was bigger or... Um, and it didn't heal all creatures or something. Like, there's ways to make this useful. But as it is, it's just not great. Also, I want to point out something here. This is a super, like... These icons are identical except for the sort of the size of the effect. That's not great. I mean, it's okay in that both of these skills are utter trash. But uh, that's that's not, not great. Anyway, heal area just... I don't like it. Um, that said, it is really nice for them to have uh, given some of the char enemies this. So that way they can heal you. Uh, when you're up in their face and you're getting wailed on by all their allies. And then you're wailing on them. They're like, hey, I need to heal myself. I'm going to use heal area. Hey, I've healed you too. Uh, and you certainly see NPCs using this a lot. Just like random NPCs out in the world uh, will heal the, will use this. But I, I don't like this at all. Um, it's it's like you're not going to play the Magic the Gathering card that just says uh, heal like I don't, I don't there's not even a good comparison it's like yeah there's not even a good comparison I, I just I don't like this uh, this effect and the fact that they decided they needed to give us a second one is beyond me uh, and the same thing happened right here with heal other so heal other uh, is the same spell as Jamie's Gaze. 
Uh, I have a lot to say about these two. They're 10 energy, 3 quarter seconds, uh, cast time, 3 second recharge, spell, heal target other ally, as you'd expect with, you know, heal other. Uh, let's drop Jamie's gaze on here. So, uh, anyway, heal them for 151 health. These are very strong heals, um, but they are terrible design. Um... So, first of all, like I said, 10 energy is very expensive for a monk. These have very low recharge as well, which means that they refresh very quickly. Uh, 3 seconds is actually kind of on the lower end, um, as, as we've seen. So, recharging in 3 seconds means that you're inclined to use this a lot. Um, so, these are not very good because healing for 151 health is... Yeah, it's super great, but it's just so expensive at 10 energy. It's just not quite worth it. Um, there are other options for healing. You're Basically, when you're in healing prayers, you're probably really heavily leaning on your elite for, for your big heals. And um, unfortunately, Jamie's Gaze and Heal Other are very expensive, and so they're just kind of priced out of it. To me, they're ones. Um, I don't have time, so I want these. Uh... The other issue that they have is, like, I could see maybe trying to run them on, like, Secondary Monk, uh, like a Necromancer or something, but at that point, I'm just going to go into Ritualist, because the Ritualist has a heal there that's 140 HP at 12, I believe, uh, but does not cost, it costs 5 energy, not 10, and that still matters on a Necro and stuff, so... Uh, unfortunately, they're kind of pushed out in that area as well. I think I have used this on Necromancer back in Prof before Factions came out. It was like, okay. Um, but the, the big problem, and the reason why I said that these are poorly designed, is that they are noob traps. They are something that traps, uh, or, or is a mistake that new, new players will use, uh, or will fall into when they use these. Now, I should add that you see these used all the time on, um, Menlo, um, in uh, the henchman and the uh, the companion ally character in factions and stuff. Uh, they often give this to AI. But the, the problem with Heal Other is it is very inefficient uh, at 10 energy. Um, you're healing 15 HP per point of energy spent, uh, is, is how this works, right? Uh, versus something like Ethereal Light, uh, you are healing 19, I think? Is that right? Mm, yeah. No. 17. Anyway, it, it's a lot more efficient energy-wise. Uh, or it's not... It Maybe maybe these are reasonable energy-wise, but um, the, it's just the 10 energy is just so expensive. So, anyway, the problem is that they look really strong because the amount of healing is really good. Uh, the low recharge is really nice, and new players are not going to be good at energy management. Uh, they're not going to realize how expensive these are to use, and um, they'd probably be a better design at like an, a 6 or 8 second recharge, honestly, because that's about all the more often you should even consider casting them. Um, they're obviously better at 3, but um, anyway, what I'm saying is new players will be like, oh man, this spell heals for so much. Like, that's super strong. I'm going to use that. And then they're going to be running out of energy and wondering why they can't keep anyone alive. And they're going to like slot this onto the heroes, and then their hero monks are going to be out of energy, and they don't know why they're dying. Because the thing is, when you run your monks out of energy through these expensive spells, you're going to lose your effect of healingness. Like, you don't... Monks don't have the energy throughput for this sort of effect. And so, the, the problem that you run into for new players is they look at this spell and it seems really strong because the numbers are good. And they don't realize how bad that, that 10 energy cost is, and so they run themselves out of energy... And it just makes them ineffective monks because of that. So I think you could theoretically try to run this um, as a more experienced player. It's kind of like more of an, oh dang, I really need some healing button. But it just, I never use them because they're so expensive. And I think the design causes new players to make the game harder on, their self, uh, on themselves because they have really poor energy management because they're using really expensive healing spells. Um, so yeah, I... Do not want Jamie's Gaze slash Heal Other. I really wish they hadn't thought, oh, we need another one of those. Um, I wish they'd done a, a different design that was more interesting. 
But here we are. These are the, the spells that we have. And uh, unfortunately, they're just distinctly not... Di like, distinctly too expensive. And unfortunately, it's a design that can cause new players a lot of grief. Okay. Uh, without them realizing it, too. Like, that's the problem, is... It's too expensive, and they won't know why they're always out of energy. They won't necessarily connect it. It, it takes a while to understand some of those mechanics. Um, so, uh, it's basically, if you if something looks strong on the surface, especially to a new player, you want it to actually be at least kind of strong. Um, there are certainly certain effects that they're going to over-prioritize uh, and things like that. Um, and there's a certain amount of needing to be able to learn when to stop using stuff. But... You want, you want to be really careful about things that will actually make the game significantly harder for new players. And unfortunately, something like Heal Other does actually make the game harder for new, newer players because it is really expensive uh, and will drain your energy very quickly. And if you don't realize that, uh, it's going to give you a lot of problems and make you a very ineffective monk. So that's my problems with it. I think there's a, a big lesson to be learned there uh, about... Like, it's okay for stuff that's uh, really strong to not be obviously strong, but stuff that looks strong but it's actually weak uh, is really bad. And you want to avoid that sort of quadrant of, like, is actually strong and looks strong um, and is actually weak and looks weak. Like, that kind of makes a 4x4 uh, a four four grid. And you kind of want to make sure that uh, looks strong was actually weak uh, grid is... It, as minimally filled with components of your game as you possibly can. So. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to Heal Party. I've gone on long enough about Heal Other Jamie's Gaze. The Heal Party is 15 energy, 2 second cast time, 2 second recharge, spell, heal entire party for 66 health. Uh, this is very powerful. It is also extremely expensive and has a very long cast time. Uh, to me, this is a 2. The effect... Keep in mind, it's it's not bounded by area. I think that there is some bound. I think it's like maintain spirit range or um, or maintain enchantment range or like spirit range or something like that. There there is some limit to how far it heals. I believe uh, maybe that's only in PvP. I'm not sure. Um, there are so this sort of skill is, is popular on like an elementalist uh, or a necromancer secondary, or I like it with uh, healer's boon. I do not generally bring this with monks uh, just by itself. I prefer uh, Heaven's Delight and um, Divine Healing because this is, as has established, very, very expensive uh, and you can quite spam it and run yourself out of energy. 15 is just really, really high. Now, note that Divine Favor bonus does not apply to each uh, individual healed by these AoE skills. It only applies to sort of the focus of them. In this case, it's going to be you. So you'll get the Divine Favor healing from heal when you cast Heal Party. Your allies do not. So that's something really important to be aware of. Um, so that means that it works just fine on Secondary Monk because it's not really a huge loss. So I would consider running it on something like an Elementalist uh, or something like a Necromancer that have a lot more energy throughput. Um, or when I'm making it absolutely ludicrous, a one-second activation time healing for almost 100 HP uh, and even then, uh, with the uh, with the healer's boon build, even then you have to be kind of spare on it because it is very energy intensive. So powerful skill, but um, you pay for that. Uh, and there are other options for the same sort of effect, maybe a bit weaker, but uh, far cheaper to use. But I like that there's different reasons why you'd want to use each one. So. And definitely was popular in PvP for various reasons, but we don't need to get into those. Healer's Covenant. One pip of energy for maintenance, uh, five energy to cast, quarter second cast time, five second recharge, elite enchantment spell. While you maintain, the, maintain this enchantment, your healing prayers spells heal for 25% less health, but cost minus three energy. So this almost makes um, something like heal other kind of worth it. Uh... Because making them cost uh, 7 energy is nice, but 25% less healing is actually a huge downside. Um, that, losing a quarter. So, 
for example, if we're looking at that, that heal other example, knocking a quarter off of this is going to be, oh, uh, what? That's not quite 40, so it's going to be 36-ish, I want to say. Um, I'm not sure the exact math off the top of my head, but you can see the, where this is going to be dropping it down to closer to 110 HP, roughly, that this would heal. Um, 115, something like that. That's a pretty sizable decrease. Uh, I don't like Healer's Covenant very much. Um, it plays nicely with Healing Breeze, because Healing Breeze doesn't care. Uh, you make Healing Breeze cheaper, and it just gives a bunch of health regen, and you're like, cool, whatever. Healing Seed it probably plays well with. Um, so there's some enchantments that I think it works nice with that uh, are less negatively impacted by it. I'm just kind of scanning here. I don't know how well it works with Patient Spirit. Um, but reducing your healing is kind of a big deal. Making your stuff cheaper is really nice. But the thing is, a lot of the healing prayers just don't heal for that much, honestly. So... The fact is it competes with your elite slot. I'm going to give it a 2 because it is technically powerful energy management. I wish it also made your spells recharge faster. If it was something like heal for 25% less health but cost minus 3 energy and recharge 25% faster or something like that, um, then I'd be more psyched about it. But as it is, I mean, I'm, the, the faster recharge is not a huge deal. As it is, like, making my ethereal light cost 2 energy but heal for 60 health is just not where it's at. Um, that healing decrease is actually quite substantial, and I do not want it. So uh, that's kind of Healer's Covenant. Um, might be fun to copy that off of an ally uh, and also bring um, Healer's Boon just to get cheaper stuff with some of those benefits, but that's questionable. I don't know. It, the thing is, too, you're losing some of that um, decreased energy cost in maintaining this. It's an interesting design space that's trying to play around in, but I just don't like it very much. Uh, and again, it's using up your elite slot, and that's that's a huge, huge issue. Healing Breeze. Healing Breeze is 10 energy, 1 second cast time, 5 second recharge, enchantment spell for 15 seconds, target ally gains plus 8 health regeneration. So, plus 8 health regen is 16 HP per second, which is quite strong. This actually will heal for, oh, what's it going to be, like 240 HP or something like that. This is actually a really powerful heal uh, in that regard, but it's 10 energy. Um, so, I like this better than um, Heal Other and Jamie's Gaze. I like it substantially more than those. Substantially enough that I'm going to give it a 2. So there's a couple of reasons why. One, it plays really nicely. Because, like, if you bring something that extends the length of enchantments, like an enchanting mod, uh, that'll make it uh, last 20% longer. So that's, like, an additional 3 seconds, which is, like, another 40-something. Yeah, it's, like, another 48 HP on top of it. Like, this can heal for quite a lot. Um, I don't usually bring this to be clear it's way too expensive uh but the effect is really strong um so there are some situations too where i'll have used it uh some 55 builds i've used it for my health regeneration although um because uh that's usually going to be in like a necromancer 55 or something like that 55 by the way is a, a build that we'll talk about it probably when we get to protect protection prayers because Protection Prayers is kind of what it's based around. It uses um, some stuff where basically it it caps the amount of damage you take to 5. So being able to heal by 16 HP per second makes you super durable. Uh, and it's useful in those sorts of scenarios. It, it's it's a, an okay spell. Um, I don't... Like I said, I don't tend to bring it because, again, it, it does have the energy issues. But I find it more useful than something like Heal Other. You can heal yourself with it. Uh, as an example as well. So, um, yeah. I do like it as kind of like the simple design of a strong health regen spell. Healing Burst. 5 energy, 3 quarter second cast time, 4 second recharge, elite spell. Target ally, so it can target yourself, is healed for 130 HP. 
All party members in earshot of your target gain health equal to the divine favor bonus from this spell. Your smiting prayers are disabled for 20 seconds. So for me, this is a five. Um, my monks basically are always using this for, for my AI monks. Um, it's just a very solid heal. Uh, four second recharge time is reasonable. It's only five energy. 130 HP is quite strong. Uh, not like the strongest, obviously. But it's, it's a very strong heal. And it does the Divine Favor bonus in an area of effect. So it, it helps push up everybody's bar. That additional AoE healing on it is really, really, really nice. Obviously, it's not great if you're not a primary monk, but uh, and thus able to get the Divine Favor bonus. But healing all of your um, party members, I don't know if it double dips on the Divine Favor bonus on your target. I don't believe it does, though. Uh, but... Yeah, you're, you're doing this because it heals your entire party uh, most of the time. Like, it's it's commonly going to be healing your entire party for, like, some 40, like, 30, uh, probably 32 with a lot of where I stat my uh, heroes at. But that's just a nice little additional topper up. So this is a really cool design as well. Um, I like sort of the interplay of what it's doing. The whole disabling your smiting prayers clause is just because they, this was too strong with smiting prayers or something. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Uh, they just they don't like making stuff work with smiting prayers. So here it is. Don't use this with smiting prayers. The end. Uh, that's okay. I don't. Typically, if I'm in smiting prayers, I'm going a bit more offensive anyway. But um, yeah. So I quite like this. It is a staple for me. Uh, it does everything I want. It heals somebody a good chunk, and it heals everyone else some additional amount. Uh, so, a very solid skill. And um, it is my preferred healing prayers elite uh, over some of the more traditional options. Cough, word of healing, cough. Uh, for reasons that I'll explain when we get down there. So, Healing hands. Five energy, quarter second activation time, 25 second recharge, elite enchantment spell for 10 seconds. Whenever target ally takes damage, that ally is healed for 29 health. So this is kind of a weird one. Um, it's directly competing with healing seed, which is a non-elite that heals for actually a little bit less health. But if you look at healing seed, whenever target other ally takes damage, that ally and all adjacent allies gain 25 health. This kind of heals an area of effect. Doesn't take your release slot, but more energy. Uh, I don't tend to use healing hands, though. Um, like, so you can target yourself with it, which is nice. Um, it's been part of... Is it? Is it the Elite in... Now I need to check. So there's been some old... Uh, probably under novelty. No, not under novelty. Okay, I don't... Whatever. Um, somewhere I have, oh, old pre-builds. Here we are. Uh, so I think it might have been, yeah, the Paladin pre-build made use of this one. Uh, I mean, that pre-build was questionable. Um, this is a powerful effect. Like, you throw this on somebody, and if they're getting hit by a bunch of small attacks, they're going to shoot up in health uh it is kind of playing in the space that protection prayer just does the thing is while this effect is really strong the this being an elite is not something i really want and not only is it competing with healing seed there's also seed of life which is directly inspired by healing seed i guess and this one uh which also has this sort of healing effect but heals all of your party um for two health for each rank in divine favor, which, you know, can be fairly comparable. Um, so healing hands is really cool. Uh, to me, honestly, it's like a three. It's one of those spells that's like, yeah, this is quite solid. It's a very powerful effect, but like 25 second recharge though, that's the real kicker here. If it was, like, a 10-second recharge and, like, a 5-second duration, honestly, it would be so much better. Um, I don't know that it's, it would be better enough to push off Healing Burst, but, like, that's the, the issue, right? You need your... 
Monk just does not get strong heals outside of elites and like overpriced spells. So you're really having to put your your strong healing skills like those are your elites. And so pushing off an elite that's a strong heal, um, like that's really really hard to do. So healing hands is uh, unfortunately a victim of that. Um, but I like the design space and I like what it's doing. So. Healing Light. Uh, oh, and this is definitely better than uh, Marker Protection, but we'll talk about Marker Protection later. That's Protection Prayers with, like, yeah. This this is playing in a very similar space to Marker Protection. Marker Protection is stronger in effects, kind of, with a caveat, um, but way worse in stats, otherwise, along the top row. So, top row being the, the energy cost, cast time, all that sort of stuff. Uh, uh, anyway, Healing Light. 5 energy, 1 second cast time, 4 second recharge, elite spell, heal target ally for 88 health. If your target has an enchantment, you gain 3 energy. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. This doesn't heal for enough. The effect is good of like, okay, I heal somebody and I get a refund if they're enchanted. That's a really kind of neat design space as well. I like the idea of playing around in that space of like, oh, how can we make some monk spells actually more efficient? Um, but at a one second cast time, not three quarter. A lot of the healing is three quarter. One second is a little bit longer. Uh, four second recharge is a little bit long. Um, I'd rather this be like a two second recharge, but like the 88 health is just not quite enough. Again, it's trying to compete with healing burst. Healing burst is 130. I'm happy to pay the additional three energy. And again, the, the three energy regain from this is not guaranteed um to me this is like another three it's perfectly fine but i need my elite slot to be more oomph more impactful and this is just not quite there uh, and that's that's really what the problem is with this one so yeah un unfortunately i just i don't like what it's it's uh i like what it's trying to do but it's just not quite potent enough um Okay, so that brings us to Healing Ribbon. So Healing Ribbon is 10 energy, which you know by this point, it kind of sinks it. It's one second cast time, five second recharge. Spell, target other ally is healed for 92 health, which is a decent amount. Um, up to two additional allies near tar your targeted ally are healed for 82 health. So this one's okay. Uh, frankly, it is kind of expensive, but... Here's the thing. Compared to heal other, it actually heals for more HP. If you're getting that, that allies near your target. So, um, I don't like this one. It is expensive. For me, this is like a two. Uh, again, it's, it's just too expensive. And just for raw heals, um, it's going to have a hard time slotting on. Again, it's trying to compete against Duena's Kiss. Uh, stuff like that, and it's just not gonna line up. Um, it's there's other things that are, that are gonna be able to get in ahead of it. Uh, the effect is is quite solid, um, and I certainly like it better than something like Karai's Healing Circle or uh, just just ordinary. What is it? Heal area. Uh, I want to call that Healing Circle too, but it's it's not. Um, it's better than those, but uh, not enough for me to to bring it most of the time. I, I have brought it on like Healer's Boon before, and it's quite potent there. So that's certainly a spot to consider it. But again, the energy cost is high. Healing Ring. 5 energy, 1 second cast time, 10 second recharge. Spell, heal adjacent creatures for 150 health. The caster is not healed for some reason. Um... So, as you'll notice, its energy cost and recharge have been swapped from, like, Healing Circle. Uh, still 150 health. Adjacent creatures. So, it heals everyone. The area of effect is still adjacent. But not healing yourself is kind of a downside. Um, I don't like this either. Uh, I guess it's arguably okay to try to heal minions this way. But Blood of the Master is just better so I'm 
I don't think this affects spirits. That would be interesting to check. But spirits are usually exempt from a lot of these things. Um, and there's other options if you want to heal your spirits anyway. So I don't like healing ring any more than I like the healing circles. I'm going to give this guy a one. I just don't want this effect. It's super awkward to use. You have to get next to you guys. You want to... Like, it's a little bit more forgivable, but at the same time, you're not able to heal yourself with it. So I don't know. It's just not very good. Uh, healing seed. I touched on this a little bit earlier because it's kind of like healing hands, but not quite. So it's 10 energy, 2 second cast time, which is long. 25 second recharge, which is also long, but the effect is there. Enchantment spell for 10 seconds. Whenever target other ally takes damage, that ally and all adjacent allies gain 25 health. So this makes that ally super durable, especially if you have some protection prayers to reduce the damage they take even further. Um, oh, hey, elementals in the background. Uh, I like this one quite a bit. This is a 4 for me. I will often bring this one... Um, I'm not always going to bring it, of course. It is kind of expensive, but it's the sort of effect where, like, at 25 second recharge, I'm okay with 10 energy, and the effect is very strong because this can heal for so much. The amount of healing you can get in that 10 seconds if somebody's really getting wailed on is absolutely ludicrous. So this this effect is really, really, really powerful. Um, I don't know why it has the adjacent claws and healing hands doesn't. Uh, in some regards, that makes Healing Seed better. So, I don't know. That's kind of questionable. Um, but yeah. So, Healing Seed, very strong. Uh, like it quite a bit. It's a fun space to play around with. Uh, and is a very good way of keeping your allies alive. Okay. Healing Touch. Five energy, three quarter second. Cast time, five second recharge. Spell. Heal target touched ally for 51 health. Uh, and then the health gain from Divine Favor is doubled for this spell, for some reason. So if you have, you know, your 10 Divine Favor, it's healing for an additional 60, uh, 4 health. Um, this is actually a very strong self-heal. You can heal any ally with it, but if you target yourself, obviously you can touch yourself. Uh, you're in touch range of yourself. So um, I feel like this is kind of playing on Lay on Hands from Dungeons & Dragons. I think is the spell. I don't play D&D. I watch some D&D streams. Um, this is useful in some scenarios in PvP. I wouldn't bring this in PvE, though. I want my spells to be able to heal anyone. Um, I'm going to give this a 2. Because it's kind of clunky. It works really well with uh, certain sorts of, like, I need to heal myself back up type builds um, that Monk might be doing slash infused health slash questionable um this is notable for being on alicia the henchman um she would use this on your warriors and run up to the front line and get herself killed it was led to a lot of tropes uh that are actually played on in the late added um finale area after beating prophecies like originally when you beat prophecies i think you were just dropped in drachner's forge i want to say it's been long enough ago i don't actually remember they added that ending area though and there's some dialogue that you can get by talking to people um and one of them uh they talk about uh alicia uh being basically scolded for running into the front lines and also if you go into the norn uh, arena she has more of a, an offensive thing going on there that's also kind of playing on that um, and that's simply because she was given healing touch her AI is like oh healing touch I'm going to use that to heal the warrior and run into the front line and get herself killed and stuff like that so uh, it spawned a lot of memes and stuff like that um, but in and of itself it's not a skill that I would typically bring because that touch range is actually a huge downside um so it's not like the healing strength is there, but the touch range is a very, very, very big downside. And so uh, I, I typically am not going to make use of this one. Uh, healing Whisper. Five energy, one second cast time, one second recharge. Spell. Target other allies healed for 88 health. Great. This spell has half the normal range. Boo. So I'm going to be like... That half normal range is a huge downside. You might not think it, but I've tried to play with this one, 
And um, I often find myself, because like spell range is a little bit over aggro. So this is a little bit under, like this is half that, right? Um, so normal spell range is a little over earshot. So what you find is if you're trying to heal your front line, often you're actually kind of towards the back. And so you have to spend a few moments, a few precious moments running up to them uh, to get healing whisper off. Um, so that half range can actually be quite the downside. I think with skillful positioning, you can kind of mitigate it some, but you do have to position yourself a little bit closer to the front line than you ideally want. Uh, I'm going to give this a three. I think it's a relatively solid spell. It, you can, cannot heal yourself either with it, which is a downside. Um, it doesn't eclipse Duena's Kiss. Honestly, a lot of my monks have like Healing Burst, Duena's Kiss, and maybe like Patient Spirit or something. Uh, but they don't have a ton of direct heals outside of that. So this is going to have a hard time getting onto that sort of build. Um, the low recharge is really, really nice though. So yeah, um, that's that's pretty great. Uh, so eh, I'm I'm not the biggest fan. I'm definitely going to want Ethereal Light, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, Ethereal Light over this one. Uh, just because that range is actually, a, that half range is actually a much bigger downside than it sounds like. Infuse health. 10 energy, quarter second cast time, no recharge. There's a catch. So it's a spell. Lose half your current health. So if you are at 50% uh, HP, you go down to 25%. Uh, target other ally is healed for 129% of the amount you lost. So infuse health is not a spell I'm generally going to ever bring in PvE. Um, I love it when Char use it because there's Char... A char build, and you see this in Priest Ring Ascalon, that's like infuse health, um, oh, healing, what was it, heal area, where they like infuse health and then they heal area to get their HP back. Um, this is also super useful, uh, or has been run with like vampiric weapons and word of healing, because word of healing heals you for bonus health if you're below 50%. Uh, and so the vampiric weapon will drop you just below 50% uh, and allow you to um, heal yourself back up more strongly with Word of Healing after infusing. So this is a 2. Uh, the effect is really, really powerful in terms of the, the amount of raw health you he can heal with. And the fact that you can like pop this twice in a row if you really need to get a bunch of healing off um, can be quite strong as well. So keep in mind... like. With my current HP of 490, this heals for 245 times 1.29 um, HP plus the Divine Favor bonus on top. So this can easily heal for like 300, H 300 plus HP. Um, uh, and if you have like 600 HP, which is reasonable to get uh, if you're not using superior runes, if you're using mi just minor runes, uh, and like equipment that raises your HP and stuff like that. Um, it's quite reasonable to get up to 600 HP. This can heal for just so much. But you're spending a lot of health on it. Um, which is really honestly generally not worth it. The one time that it is actually is in PvP. So this is much more of a PvP skill. This has a nice icon. Um, oh wow. That's literally the same hand as in like heal other rotated 90 degrees and then flipped that's hilarious i did not realize that they really reused this uh this icon or this hand didn't they uh, i did not know that until until doing this i have been playing this game for uh 14 years basically and did not realize how much they reused the hand from heal other uh anyway infuse health is really a powerful counter spike skill so it's really useful in PvP when they're when the opposing team is unleashing a spike on one of your dudes because you can just suddenly uh, it, I infuse them with health, right? You just give them a ton of HP with this uh, and, and save them from the spike. So that was a really important strategy in PvP. But that just, again, it doesn't happen very much in PvE. So it's just not quite worth it. Um, and the amount of... Uh, energy that this requires the health that you lose for it is the costs are very high so um this is not a skill that you just kind of casually use uh so that's that's kind of 
where we're at with it. Now, I already talked about, uh, and the design for this is good. Like, it's a good space that's playing in. It's a powerful skill. It's just uh, very costly, and, and PvE does not need sort of the service it provides of being a very quick way of restoring a bunch of health very, very uh, instantly. So, um, if you do want that effect, bring a Dervish with um, a, a skill that Dervishes have that plays in a similar space, but not quite the same. We'll talk about it when we get to Dervish uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, okay, so we talked about Jamie's Gaze. We talked about Christ Healing Circle. I don't know why they needed to duplicate these bad skills and factions, but they did. Here we are. I'd rather have made new skills. Um, Light of Deliverance. So this is five energy, one second cast time, six second recharge, elite spell. All party members are healed for 57 health. So this is an elite version of Heal Other... Um, this is a, a fine heal, uh, but it's trying to compete for elite slots, and that's quite awkward. Um, it's only, like, it is better than, uh, Heaven's Delight and whatnot, but it's not a ton better. It's basically half the recharge for, and a little bit more HP. Uh, the effect is strong, um, but Healing Burst also heals basically my whole party not quite as much but it also heals a single person a great deal so um to me this is one of those things i'm gonna give this one a four i do think it's quite strong it's just it's competing for that elite slot and that's that elite slot is basically married to uh especially on my heroes healing burst uh so i've been happy to run this sometimes uh and it works okay on a monk secondary as well um if you're wanting to do that for some reason. Okay, live vicariously. Uh, so this is a maintain enchantment. It is a one pip maintain because that's what the maintain cost is. Five energy, two second cast time, no recharge. Enchantment spell, while you maintain this enchantment, whenever target ally hits a foe, you gain 14 health. Um, so this is a two. If you apply it to yourself whenever you hit, you gain the health. That's pretty cool. Um, it's very dubious to use this. I've used it on something like a warrior or an assassin before, uh, or like a paragon or something. Um, so I definitely prefer this on a secondary monk because I want to benefit. Basically, I want the, the person to benefit the healing being the one who's in the front line and is getting hit. Uh, this is just kind of weak. I, I like the flavor of what's going on, right? Living vicariously is kind of living through someone else, and you're gaining health through someone else. Um, but you just don't really need this? That's that's really what it comes down to. You just don't really need this effect. Like, you're healing yourself with this. Like, this is a very awkward self-heal, where you're, like, putting this on your party members, you're spending a bunch of energy regeneration. Yeah. Cool design space. Again, I like the icon, but uh, I don't. I don't need that. Mending, good old mending, popular with new players the world over. Mending is one pip of energy regeneration to maintain. Ten energy, two second cast time, no recharge. Enchantment spell. While you maintain this enchantment, target ally gains plus three health regeneration. Um, you can get this up to plus four HP regen. Uh, with more healing prayers. Does 13 do it? Yeah, 13 does it. I don't think you can get it up to plus 5. If you get it up to plus 5, that'd be pretty cool. Um, this is very energy intensive. I generally don't think this is worth using. I'm going to give this a 2 as well. Um, it's a dubious thing to use. You could technically make a warrior that's like live vicariously in mending and then the rest of your bar is all adrenaline. You're like, hey, I'm super tanky. I gain 6 HP per second and uh, live vicariously is gaining me additional HP whenever I hit. Um, I don't think that's a good build. I think that's probably a fun sort of goof build. New players like this because it's like, oh man, I can make myself like a bunch durable and stuff like that. But it's just, it's not worth the energy. It really, really isn't. Like, Bring Healing Breeze over this. It's way more efficient uh, than trying... Like, this is such a slow heal. Uh, so, obviously it lasts indefinitely, but yeah. Orison of Healing. So, this is 5 energy, 1 second cast time, 2 second recharge. It is a spell. It is heal, target ally for 60 health. It is, like, your basic heal. 
Um, I like, the, again, monks have really great icons. It's this really beautiful, like, cloud scene with light kind of bursting out of it. Um, very iconic uh, sort of icon. Very weak heal. Um, I, I give this a two. I don't use this because the healing amount it ends up being very low. Uh, you'd have to put quite a lot in healing prayers and divine favor to be able to kind of get good healing out of this. Um, so you'd basically need like 16 healing prayer uh, to, to... I don't actually know where that would get. Let me... I'm curious now. So if I go up to 16 in healing prayers, uh, Orison is a nice 73 health, which is okay. But here's the thing. Right, that puts it behind uh, Ethereal Light, which is now 105. Dwayne's Kiss is 63 plus 37, um, which I'm definitely bringing. Healing Burst is now 170 HP, uh, which is, I think we can all agree, quite strong. Healing Whisper is 104. Uh, Orison is just weak. Uh, it's not, it's like, it's... With Healer's Boon, it becomes actually a very solid heal. Uh, and the two-second recharge is very nice in that scenario. I definitely would get it up to the 73 plus 50% is making it heal for over 100. Uh, in that case, it's actually quite usable. But the, the issue is, with outside of that, the healing is just way too weak for the amount of energy. It would probably be okay at about 2 to 3 energy. Um, but at 5, it's just too expensive for the amount of HP that it heals. Uh, you're at this spec at 12 you are getting uh a whopping 12 hp per point of energy which is very inefficient so um yeah i i don't ever use this it is your most basic monk heal but um it's a very underwhelming one at that it would be nice if it was a little bit more interesting but it's nice that it has a, a nice place with uh, healer's boon at least patient spirit five energy quarter second uh, cast time, which is a little bit misleading. Four second recharge. Enchantment spell. For two seconds, target ally is enchanted with patient spirit. Unless this enchantment ends prematurely, that ally is healed for 102 health when the enchantment ends. So, it, basically, if it lasts its full duration and ends normally, uh, they get healed for 102 health. This is a nice heal. It is not a quick heal. The quarter second cast time might sound quick, but you're actually... Think of it as having a uh, two and a quarter second cast time where it's recharging for two of those seconds and you can do other things. Um, I do like this one. It plays nicely with Duane's Kiss. If you pop this on somebody, Duane's Kiss them, and then this goes off. Um, and so it's a nice general sort of like repair heal. It's not a quick heal, but it's nice like I'm pushing your bar kind of up. Um, I, this is a four for me. Uh, I'm going to bring this quite often. It's going to get on my bar ahead of like Ethereal Light often. Um... So Ethereal Light has a little bit of a hard time coming on because, like, this is going to go over it. This is obviously going to go before, like, Orson and stuff like that. So uh, quite quite solid. Um, yeah. Which brings us to Renew Life. So Renew Life, it, and I actually quite like the design. I, I, I just I want to kind of focus on this a little for a moment. I like the design of Patient Spirit. It's playing in an interesting area. I do want to say I don't recommend bringing multiple copies of this across different uh, monks just because if you cast them on the same person, then they'll stack and they'll only get the benefit of one of them. So it, it's playing around in a very interesting area uh, that I, I quite like, and it's a solid skill to boot, so that's really cool. Anyway, Renew Life. Renew Life is 15 energy, 4 second cast time, but only 5 second recharge. Those numbers might seem big. The reason is because it is a resurrection spell. Spell, resurrect target touch dead target party member with 50% health and 17% energy. That party member and all allies within earshot are healed for 115 health. I don't use this one. Um, I think it's okay, but the touch range is actually a pretty big downside. And it's also 15 energy, which is quite expensive. But it is technically uh, a pretty big party heal. I'm going to give this one a two. I think it's okay to bring, um, but it's, it's not... My Resurrects of Choice are not this one. Uh, and you do need to be investing in Healing Prayers to really get a decent heal out of it, so that just kind of makes it clunky and awkward. Uh, Restful Breeze. Five 
energy, one second cast time, eight second recharge, enchantment spell for 16 seconds. Target ally has plus 10 health regeneration, which is max, remember. Um, or that's, that's the amount appropriate for the cap. Now keep in mind, uh, health degen and health regen cancel each other out. So if you have minus five health degen, then this will get you to plus five health regen uh, equivalent. So anyway, this enchantment ends if that ally attacks or uses a skill. So uh, yeah, this is a one then. Because this... You're going to have a really hard time getting full duration out of this. I'd rather bring Healing Breeze. Healing Breeze is more expensive, yes, but it reliably stays on the person. I understand the space that this is playing around in. It's like, oh, if you're not doing anything, this heals you for a bunch or whatever. That sounds really cool until you actually try to play with it, uh, at which point it just becomes really awkward. Um... The AI is probably going to play terribly with this, where you apply it, and then they're just going to auto-attack, and it's gone. So, um, yeah, I, I don't like this. That, that, that end early clause is really oppressive, is what it comes down to, because uh, they can't do anything. So, I don't like it. Restore life. 10 energy, 4 seconds, uh, cast time, 8 second recharge, spell... Touch the body of a fallen party member. That uh, party member, I don't know why it says target, but that party member is returned to life with 56% health and 80% energy. So yeah, as you'd guess, restore life restores life. Um, this is another touch range run, like renew life. I'm not quite sure why so many of them are touch range in healing prayers, uh, but they are. Um, this has the distinction of being, I think, outside of special cases. Uh, so, Unyielding Aura and Vengeance. The uh, resurrection spell that resurrects with the most percentage energy? I could be wrong on that, but I'm fairly certain it does. Um, in general, that is really useful. Uh, also becomes cheaper on, like, Monk or whatever. Or, not on Monk, on Ranger, because it's touch range. So does Renew Life for what that's worth. Um... Having a big chunk of energy return when you're resurrected is really nice. Touch range is a huge downside, though. Uh, this is not my spell of choice. I'm going to give this another one, uh, another two, or a two like uh, Renew Life. The thing is, you do need quite a bit of investment. You're bringing this because of the amount of energy it returns. That's why you would pick this one. And that is a good reason to pick it, to be clear, uh, but I'm not excited to use this one it's not a common choice for me compared to resurrection chant so resurrection chant is 10 energy six seconds cast time 15 second recharge a little bit slow and long uh, spell resurrect target party member with up to your current health and 29 percent energy this spell has half the normal range this is my resurrection of choice uh i will typically i can't demonstrate this unless i pop that off um I will typically bring it with just three, at which point it's only restoring 11% energy, but I'm not putting a ton of attribute points into it. Um, the half normal range is not a huge downside. Uh, I don't... Here's the thing, right? This resurrects them with up to your current health, which means that they actually can be resurrected with quite a lot of health. Uh, this for me is a five because this is basically my resurrection spell du jour. This is the one that I always use. This is the one that became quite popular um, because it does resurrect with, well, basically IHP. Uh, and that's really, really useful. I do like it best on Mesmers just because of the quick uh, time. The fact that it's a, got some range to it is nice. The half range is a downside, to be fair, or, and to be clear, but it's not as big of a problem as Healing Whisper. The problem with Healing Whisper is that you often um, are outside of range when you cast it and have to run up to range, and for a healing spell, that matters a lot. For a resurrection spell, having to run up to the range doesn't matter that much. Um, and Mesmer's help with the, uh, the lengthy cast time. Um... I definitely think that there can be an argument for something like Restore Life, uh, but Resurrection Chant is the the Resurrection spell that I use the most um, because it it is it resurrects with a lot of health with like minimal investment. And here's the thing too, All right? Uh, it's substantially better than the No Attribute Resurrect, which resurrects a party member with. 
25% health and zero energy. Yeah, so I will take 11% energy and my current health over only 25% health and no energy. Uh, so even if I don't have any attribute points to spare, really, um, I'm okay with two or three. And it's usually po quite possible to get two or three in healing uh, prayers and resurrection chant over even just resurrect. So um, I'm quite fond of this one. I think it's a little too good, if I'm being honest. Um, just because resurrect target party member with your current health is just a very strong line of text. Um, it would have been better if it was like resurrect target party member with percentage of your current health where it started off at like 10% and then went up to 100 at like 12 spec uh, or 9 spec or something like that. Uh, that would be a much better design because then you have a little bit more room to be like, oh, well, this isn't that great and pick something else. The reason why I pick this all the time is because it resurrects with often full HP uh, or very high HP, and that's just much more valuable in the middle of combat. So that's kind of what gives it its edge and why I choose it as my resurrection spell. Um, if I am doing something like some weird quirky thing where I have healing prayers on, because I, again, I don't tend to bring resurrects on my monks because I want all of their slots for making people not die. Uh, so I'll bring them on something else where I can spare it more. Um, but if I am doing something where it's like, uh, actually specking into healing prayers, there is an argument that I should be considering restore life just because of its quicker activation time and greater energy return. But yeah, resurrection chant, I'm a big fan of. Um, signet of rejuvenation, one second activation time, eight second recharge is a signet. So no energy cost. Heal target ally for 63 health. If that ally is casting a spell or attacking, that ally is healed for an additional 63 health. So that would be 126. This is not 100% reliable uh, for the bonus. Obviously, it, it will trigger quite regularly. But if they're running, then it doesn't do the bonus. That said, it's still a decent amount. And I always like a Signet. This is a 5 for me. Um, I... Basically, I'm always bringing the signet on my monks. If I'm going into healing prayers on a monk, I'm bringing the signet most likely. Uh, just because I want a signet to provide some additional healing that doesn't require me to use energy. Uh, because that's really beneficial for relieving some of the energy pressure of a build. And so signet of rejuvenation is my go-to signet because the one second activation time matters quite a bit. Um, signet of devotion heals for a little bit more baseline uh, so right here at 12, it's 83 as opposed to, yeah, 83 as opposed to the 63. This can heal for more, but a Signet of Devotion has a shorter recharge time. It's really about that activation time. Two seconds versus one second is absolutely enormous. Um, so you're, yeah, I, I like this. So like often a monk bar for me is going to involve Signet of Rejuvenation and um, some Protection Prayer stuff and like, Healing Burst uh, and um, Duena's Kiss. And so most of my healing is taken care of with Healing Burst, Duena's Kiss, and Signet of Rejuvenation. So quite fond of it. Okay, let's move on to Spotless Mind. So Spotless Mind is 5 energy, quarter second cast time, 12 second recharge, enchantment spell. For 12 seconds, target other ally loses a hex every 5 seconds. Um, I believe that this doesn't take place until five seconds have elapsed. I'm not a hundred percent on that. This is, even if it activates right away, I'm not really a big fan of it. I like the design space that it's playing in, but it just, it doesn't last long enough. Like, so here's the thing, right? Renew Hexes always removes a hex relatively quickly. I can set up my builds to be able to make use of uh, deny hexes right here in uh, Divine Favor to be able to remove two right away. Spotless Mind is just a touch clunky and slow. Um, so 
It also feels really weird to have in, in healing prayers, if I'm being honest. It doesn't feel quite like a he healing prayers to me because it doesn't heal HP. Um, it feels more like a divine favor or a protection prayers or something. Uh, but yeah, so I just, I don't, I don't use this guy. I don't think it's terrible. I'm going to give it a two. I don't think it's great. Um, it's kind of slow and clunky and there are better ways to kind of get the multiple effect uh, than, than this one. Spotless Soul. Five energy, quarter second, cast time, 12 second recharges. This is looking pretty similar to Spotless Mind, isn't it? Enchantment Spell. For 12 seconds, target other ally loses a condition every three seconds. Yeah, the fact that these are other is also kind of a little bit of a bummer. Um, so Spotless Soul is a bit better than Spotless Minds, just because it, it triggers a little bit more quickly. Uh, this is nice, I guess, if an ally is getting like repeatedly hit by stuff. I kind of don't like the fact that it's a 12 second recharge. It's a little bit long. Um, I'm more okay with this one. I'm going to give this one a three. The thing is, I, I'm often bringing something like dismiss condition for my, uh, well, in truth, the way that I'm dealing with conditions is men, body, and soul, which is, uh, most of the time, which is a ritualist spell that removes a condition for each spirit in, uh, allied spirit, I think, in earshot, and I usually am putting that on a signal of spirits build, so there's like three or four. So being able to heal them for like nine, 80, 90 HP and remove... Uh, three to four conditions is just better than this. Um, or like, and yeah, so like, this is not terrible, but um, I, I'm i just not a big fan of it. Um, I like the design space that these guys are playing around in, but I kind of feel like um, it needs to be ramped up a little bit more, if that makes sense. I think they'd be more interesting if they both lasted for like a set 10 seconds say uh and the attribute rank took it down from like every six seconds down to like every one or two um as you got up to like higher healing prayers at that point it starts to do what you want it to do which is to really keep your ally clear of that type of thing um but as it is they're a little bit slow a little bit clunky and so, sort of at that recharge, I can get the same sort of, excuse me, the same sort of effect, just a bit more potently in other ways. So, excuse me, I have got the hiccups. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of my thoughts here. Again, I like the design space that they're playing around in. It's just they're a little bit anemic for uh, compared to other options. So this is like the only way to remove conditions in uh, healing prayers for whatever that might be worth. Supportive Spirit. 10 energy, 3 quarter second, cast time, 8 second recharge, enchantment spell for 19 seconds. Whenever target ally takes damage while well knocked down, that ally is healed for 29 health. Okay. So this has a couple problems. Uh, so... I would want this to be like five energy, quarter second cast time, lasts for like three seconds and has a five second recharge or something like that. If I was going to consider bringing this effect. And even then that's like a two. This is a one for me. Um, I don't know what part of the game has enough knockdowns where I want to be bringing this to throw around at 10 energy. Like... So you're just not generally going to be able to get that much healing out of this. Um, it's kind of playing in healing sea territory, but it only works for a couple seconds at a time. I don't know. I haven't really used this, and the reason why is, like, there's not really good time to use it. Basically, the only time I, could con I can conceive of using this is when you're fighting Tundra Giants who knock down on critical hits and are super obnoxious in that way. Uh, so I could see putting it on allies getting pummeled by them because there's a good chance that it'll actually be able to do something. Uh, or I could see bringing it in the uh, Dragon's Lair mission where the last facet, the facet of strength, the warrior facet, um, has periodic regular knockdowns. In which case, if you're 
getting this on a couple of people, I could see it being okay there, but even that's dubious. The thing is, knockdowns just don't last that long, and they don't happen often enough to really use this. So to me, this is a, a weird way to try to deal with things. I like the idea of like, oh man, you're getting knocked down, let me help you. Uh, it would be amusing on a warrior build with uh, drunken blow and uh, drunken yeah drunken blow and desperation blow where you're knocking yourself down and oh now I'm getting healed while you attack me while I knock myself down or like grapple or something but that's very dubious um so yeah I'm not not a big fan not a big fan I would prefer aura of stability kind of uh and even then I'm I'm not really wanting that so I don't know. Maybe I should play with it in the right area and it'll be really cool, but here's the thing. I would just rather use Healing Seed because you know what Healing Seed does? Always work. Vigorous Spirit. So Vigorous Spirit is 5 energy, quarter second cast time, 4 second recharge, enchantment spell. For 30 seconds, each time target ally attacks or casts a spell, that ally is healed for 17 health. So this one I'm actually quite fond of. Uh, it doesn't seem like much, 17 health uh, at that sort of rate, but it lasts 30 seconds. You can get it up on several people. It boosts Duena's Kiss because it's an enchantment with very low commitment uh, relative to duration. And it turns out 17 health is actually a decent amount uh, if they're going to get in several actions during the course of that 30 seconds. It's pretty likely that they will uh, and that you'll be able to get, you know, easily 80 plus health out of this for five energy that's perfectly reasonable um you're probably gonna get a lot more so i actually quite like this one uh i'm not necessarily gonna bring it on both of my monks but there's some spells in protection prayers that i might not want to double up on or like maybe one will have patient spirit and the other will have vigorous spirit something like that so um i feel like this is probably Oh boy, I'm gonna give this a four. I kinda want, like, it's a high four for me. I usually bring it, but like, yeah. Um, I can, it's perfectly reasonable not to, uh, but I do like it. And it's it's nice for just taking that edge off, right? It's it's nice for taking the edge off uh, by putting on somebody and be like, hey, you're not like in big danger, but now you can like attack and heal yourself and, and things like that. And so it's it's good incidental healing is what it really comes down to. Okay, Word of Healing. So Word of Healing uh, is, to me, it's kind of like the Ur Monk Elite, even though I don't really use it much. Uh, it's five energy, three quarter second cast time, uh, and only a three second recharge, which is really nice. Elite Spell, heal target ally for 81 health, heal for an additional 98 health if that ally is below 50% health. So if you are getting that bonus off, this is healing for... Uh, Quick math, basically 179 HP at these stats, which is quite a lot. This is actually a very, 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 very potent heal if you are getting the bonus health. Keep in mind that bonus almost 100 HP only works if the ally is below 50% health, which is why I don't really use this one like at all. Um, I'm going to give this one a three. It is a very powerful effect, but here's the problem. It's competing for the elite slot with healing burst. Healing Burst does not heal for as much as this. Asterix. Um, the thing with Healing Burst, right, is this, it doesn't heal a single target as much as he Word of Healing does. Uh, or Word of Healing can. But it heals all of your allies, which can add up to a lot more than Word of Healing does uh, in aggregate. The big problem with Word of Healing, honestly, is A, most of the time I'm not playing a monk. And B, even when I am playing a monk, I usually have, I don't know, a couple AI, AI healers. The AI is going to try to keep HP full. Because of that, Word of Healing becomes a lot less effective. If you have more than 50% max HP, or if you have 50%, right, it, it doesn't trigger the bonus. They have to be below 50%, not at 50%. Um, so I think some infusers would go at odd HP to, to uh, try to get the benefit from that too, if they could. Um, but anyway... Uh, Word of Healing is very powerful only if you get below 50%. If you're consistently getting people above 50%, it 
uh, at or above, it suddenly becomes way worse than Healing Burst because you're only healing for 81. Um, so unfortunately, just because of quirks of like, the AI is always trying to keep people topped off. Um, it makes it, and they're, they have very, very, very good reaction times um, because I mean, it's computer, right? So that just means Word of Healing is really hard to actually get off for that full amount of healing. And this is something that's gonna take, uh, going to tank um, Zealous Benediction as well, which also has the below 50% clause going on with it, just in a different way. Um, but because of that, I just don't like Word of Healing very much. Uh, despite its, its legacy, its reputation uh, as a very powerful healing spell. And I definitely think it is, but it's a very... Um, tricky one to use in that you basically have to have somebody that's kind of dying to really get full effect from it and that's very difficult to do with the way AI works and all that sort of thing but it is absolutely seller in PvP uh, sort of scenarios and, and that sort of thing so uh, it has a really good legacy behind it but I just I think healing burst is more effective on heroes is really kind of what it kind of comes down to to some extent finally words of comfort Five energy, one second cast time, four second recharge spell. Target ally is healed for 51 health and an additional 39 health if that ally is suffering from a condition. So uh, that's going to be 90 HP uh, if they're suffering from, from a condition, which is pretty solid. In general, I would prefer to remove the condition. So I'm going to want something like dismiss condition uh, down here, which removes the condition. And if they're enchanted, they get healed uh, for some. So it doesn't, it's not conditional on a condition being removed. Uh, I'm going to prefer something like that over Words of Comfort, but I'm going to give this a three. Um, I'm noticing that I've given Monk a lot of threes relative to other professions. That's because it has a lot of skills like, this is fine, but it's just the competition is so tight that they have a really hard time uh, fitting on a bar just for being fine. So, um, The design space of where Words of Comfort is playing and is, is perfectly fine too. I do wish it was... Um, an additional 39 health for each condition the ally is suffering from. Uh, or maybe like 25 health for each condition. Just because that would be more interesting, uh, more powerful. Um, and I think that would be more compelling and more likely to get on a bar. Uh, but it's a serviceable spell uh, as it is. So... I'm certainly not objecting to using it, but it just doesn't quite meet the threshold, unfortunately. So, anyway, I think that goes ahead and covers healing prayers. If you have any questions about anything of this, too, uh, feel free to ask them. Um, I do like the design of Word of Healing. It's just so tricky to actually use well with heroes. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. So, until next time, everyone. Take care, and goodbye.